I've been running a night shift at this tiny 24-hour convenience store in the outskirts of a quaint little Indiana town for quite a while now. It's one of those places where the pace is slow and everyone knows each other, and the job's as relaxed as it can be. Nights are mostly quiet, just me and the occasional visitor popping in for some late-night necessities. That was the norm, until this one night flipped everything upside down. The evening had started just like any other, except for the fog. This wasn't your typical misty evening. We're talking thick, enveloping fog that made the store's fluorescent lights seem like a beacon in the darkness. Hours ticked away at a snail's pace, with only a handful of customers breaking the silence. Then, out of nowhere, the doorbell rang. A sound that was supposed to be familiar, but somehow felt very off. The guy who walked in was pretty nondescript at first glance, bundled up in a heavy coat and his hood pulled down so low it almost completely hit his face. There was something about him though, a vibe that set off all kinds of alarms in my head. He moved with a certain determination, making a beeline straight for the counter where I stood. I knew this wasn't going to be good. Without uttering a single word, he flashed a knife, its blade glinting under the harsh store lights. It was clear that this wasn't just a desperate act for cash. There was something menacing, almost personal about it. He whispered his demand for the money in the register, his voice sending shivers down my spine. I complied, my hands trembling, the reality of my vulnerability hitting me like a freight train. But as I emptied the register, it dawned on me that this robbery was more than just about the money. The guy seemed to relish the fear he was instilling, taking a menacing step closer, making it evident that the knife wasn't just for show. Panic surged through me, my mind racing to find some way out of this mess. And that's when the back room of the store flashed through my mind, a safe area I'd almost forgotten about. I needed a distraction, something to give me a fighting chance. Acting on instinct, I pretended to fumble with the cash drawer, sending a display of cans crashing to the floor. The noise was enough to momentarily divert his attention. Seizing the moment, I dashed toward the back office, my heart pounding in my chest, the sound of his pursuit echoing behind me. I managed to slam the door shut and lock it behind me just in time, his frustrated curses fading behind a barrier I'd just put between us. Now I was safe, but also trapped. I fumbled with my phone to dial 911. I was told the police were on their way, but were about 10 minutes out. That's when the office door's glass panel, a vulnerability I'd never considered before, became glaringly obvious. At this point, the man was screaming at me through the glass. He pounded on the door a few times, shouting for me to open the door. Then he hit the glass with the handle of the knife, shattering the small window and any sense of protection that I had. Just then, he reached his arm in to try to get the handle to unlock the door. I couldn't just sit there and do nothing. I grabbed the fire extinguisher hanging on the wall near the door and smashed it into his hand. He pulled back his arm, screaming at me. A new look of craziness was in his eyes, though, as he plunged his arm back into the room, now holding onto his knife. As he swung his arm wildly around with the knife in his hand, I had what I thought was an incredible idea. I quickly pulled the pin in the fire extinguisher, aimed toward his crazy looking eyes, and squeezed the handle. Almost instantly he started screaming as his face was coated in a thick white powder. He was stumbling all over the store trying to escape. Just as he made his way to the front door, the police pulled into the parking lot. He wasn't able to get far given the pancake batter that had formed around his eyes. They grabbed him just as he tried to make his way into the wooded area behind the store. That night was one of the craziest that I'd ever experienced. The man was caught thanks to the timely response of the police, but the damage to me was done. Returning to work there was totally out of the question.